Good morning, Micah 7 7. Today is a beautiful day the Lord has made, and I'm so glad you joined me today. So, today we're going to be talking about showers of provision. And when I think of showers of provision, I like to think of just money falling from the sky, just hundred dollar bills just flowing everywhere like rain. Um, but God has ways to provide, and I want to read a scripture to you this morning. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 in the NIV version and it says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse in other words bring your offerings bring your tithes your giving that there may be food in my house in other words take care of my house first take care of me that the things of God the first fruits test me in this I love this try me out just give me that test just test me on this says the Lord Almighty and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it that verse is so powerful I believe that God is about to open throw open the floodgates of heaven in provision for somebody today somebody that will receive this word he promises so much to us we are in covenant relationship with God now some of you have desperate financial needs I know I have been there I know what it feels like God takes us through these times to test us and to try us they are our wilderness moments where he's saying will you trust me to provide for you now I believe there is there's three things I want to talk about this morning and that is provision and if you need um, <clears throat> if you need encouragement in that area I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 6 verses 30 through 33 and it's powerful to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us the next thing I want to talk about is giving and how we give and I want to take you to Mark chapter 12 verses 41 and it says and Jesus sat over against the treasure the treasury and beheld how the people gave you know sometimes when we think about giving of our tithes we're like okay I'm God I'm giving you that 10% that's yours the rest is mine and and you know of course we take offerings and different things out of that as well but how we give is so very important. One time I heard a, a man preach, I don't pay my tithes, I give my tithes because I wanna give it in a way that is pleasing and honoring to God. God, this belongs to you. And I just shared on our prayer community page about the power of giving and those that are highly favored and highly blessed, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking not just for a little light rain and provision, but we're looking for showers. We're looking for thunderstorms of provision and blessing and favor and all these things this month. And a lot of that will depend on what we send up, what we send up. Are we sending God that those cheerful gifts, giving our best? So Jesus was watching how the people cast their money into the treasury. And I don't know if you are aware of this, but in the temple treasury, they had 13 donation boxes, if you will, that were trumpet shaped. So when people cast their money in, they would make a sound going down into the box. And of course, if you gave a lot of money, it made a great big sound and it made you sound more important right because you were giving a lot but Jesus saw the widow come by that had two mites just two mites that was all of her living that was everything she had and she cast that in and of course it didn't make a loud boisterous noise to the world but because Jesus knew that was all she had it it sounded volumes in heaven and when you think about this was all she had this was her last meals this was her bill paying money this was everything she had and I love what Jesus said she has cast in more than all the rest of them because he saw how she gave I believe that woman gave in faith and you know I believe she never missed a meal and she never missed a bill I believe God provided for everything she needed I believe he multiplied what she gave I believe that the end of that story though we can't read it and in, in, in it doesn't tell us in the word, I believe that she went home with some of the most 
heavenly surprises waiting on her. God is so good because his economy is different from us. So if we are living for God, we're not living under the world's economy. And I want to share a little story of my own. I have so many stories of provision that I could share with you today, and I, I wish I had time. But one particular year, we, we, would homeschool, we homeschooled our kids, our four kids, and uh, we got involved in Bible quizzing when they were young. The first year we Bible quizzed, it was, it was church funded which meant that all the bills were paid by the church, all of the, the travel expenses and everything. <clears throat> we paid, our church paid $10,000 in Bible quizzing that year. It was a, a lot of teens, a lot of travel. It was tremendous, tremendous. That year, our church miraculously paid off our mortgage, our church mortgage. <clears throat> I believe it was because of the investment they made in Bible quizzing. But the next year, it was told that we would be parent funded. So I told the Lord, I knew what was coming, and I thought, Lord, there's no way that we can afford to Bible quiz like we did last year. And go. But I was, I was stressed about this, and I was standing at the kitchen sink washing dishes, telling the Lord these things, and you know that's where He speaks. He speaks in those common places where we are. He comes to where we are. And He spoke to my heart, and He said, you shall have no lack. I just begin to rejoice in the Lord with soap suds all around me. I just begin to praise Him for that word He gave me. Well, fast forward two weeks before Nationals, we had a $1,500 budget that was not met, and I was beginning to stress again. I'll never forget one morning in prayer, I opened my Bible and I told the Lord, I said, God, we, we're, we're two weeks away. We need a, we need a, a miracle. and." Uh, I opened my Bible randomly, and I don't remember what version it was. It wasn't the King James Version, but it said in Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall have no lack. I felt the confirmation of the Holy Ghost as I read that, and I knew God would provide some way, somehow, and I claimed the victory. And you know that year we went to nationals, and He provided so beautifully. Let me fast forward years later. We still have $1,500 in our Bible quiz fund that's just sitting there waiting for someone to start quizzing again. That's how my God works. He's not just a God of addition, but He's a God of multiplication. He does amazing things for us. And there's so many personal stories of provision that you could share with me. And I would love to hear it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your story. I want to finish this devotional with a simple lesson on contentment. Because when we consider provision, so many times we all have so much more than what we really need. And we feel kind of depleted or we feel sorry for ourselves when we look around on Facebook or in our church or our neighborhood and we see others driving you know expensive vehicles living in expensive homes and having expensive vacations and and sometimes we lose that power of contentment and there's a story in a book called acres of diamonds it was written by robert cronwell and then rewritten by jensen franklin and it's the story of a farmer on the tigris river that his name was ali hafed and ali hafed was a very content man. He worked very hard to provide for his home and his family. And one day, a priest came through and he told Ali Hafed about diamonds and how that if he owned a diamond, he would be very wealthy. If he owned a, a mine of diamonds, his children would sit on thrones. That night, Ali Hafed went to bed, a very discontent man. The next day, he called the priest to come to his house, and the priest came, and he told him, where can I find these diamonds? The priest told him that over the mountains, into the white sands, there are diamonds everywhere. So Ali Hafed sold everything he had, bid his wife and children goodbye, and he said, when I return, we will be fabulously rich. 
Well, Ali Hafed went to, to all these different countries, Europe and Palestine, and, and finally he ended up in Spain, a very poor man and no diamonds. He wrote his wife a letter and stood at the sea, and as a raging wave came in, he jumped in and ended his life. The man that bought Ali Hafed's farm was out one day by a stream on his property. He was riding Ali Hafed's camel, and he happened to look down in the stream that belonged at one time to Ali Hafed. There was something glistening in the stream, and you guessed it, it was a diamond. In fact, this man discovered the Golconda diamond mine, which is one of the most famous diamond mines in history, and even the Queen Mother in England has diamond and jewels in her crown from this very mine. Ali Hafed did not realize that all around him he was living in acres of diamonds. My friends, today I want God to open our eyes to see. Maybe you're finding discontentment in your, your home and maybe you're looking to, to buy something that will satisfy you. Sometimes we get into um, retail therapy as we call it, looking for something to satisfy and to help us to cope or to comfort us. And then before long we find ourselves in an absolute mess financially. That's not the will of God. A little picture I have in, in, my, in my bathroom, it says, the secret to having it all is knowing that you already do. God is faithful to us and he can guide us with wisdom and stewardship in what we have and how to give, how to love, how to serve. But I believe today that as we pray, I'm gonna close in just a minute, but as we pray, I want us to pray specifically for two things. We're going to ask God to provide for your need today because we all have needs. And then we're going to ask him that he would put a spirit of contentment on us, that we don't compare ourselves with others, but that we live in the provision that he has made. Because, you know, God is not limited. His economy looks different from the world. He can take the small amount that you make and stretch it to look like a whole lot more when you give your finances to him, when you release that burden to him. He will do that for you. So this morning, I want us to bow our heads and, and just pray with me for a few minutes. Father, we thank you for the power of your spirit. And God, we don't live under the world's economy because we are in covenant relationship with you. And there's someone listening this morning that needs a miracle. They need a financial breakthrough. So God, we are speaking that and releasing showers of provision over their life today, God. Lord, there is someone else that is struggling with it. contentment because they, they're needing that fulfillment in you, Lord. You have placed all of us in beautiful places if we will look for op uh, acres of diamonds. So today, God, I'm asking just as the prophet prayed over his servant, Gehazi, Lord, open our eyes that we can see the acres of diamonds you've placed us in today. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that there would be blessing and favor upon your people as we give ourselves wholly to you, as we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. God, I thank you for the precious presence of the Lord that I feel here this morning. And we are believing you for stories that are going to be told. Stories. You are rewriting history even this morning by our faith and our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching this morning. And I pray that this devotional will be a life changer for you. God will work. God bless. Have a beautiful day. The windows of